Um, and when it asks you for like what format you want to get, um, the best case scenario is like there's a Blender file here already. In this case, I don't know what they made it with. I think it says, I don't know. I, I don't think it says uh, what they made it in. Um, but uh, when I go to download, um, usually what I'll choose is the auto-converted GLTF format. Mm -hmm. And one of the advantages of doing that is that the file will already um, have its material set up in a way that GLTF understands. That makes sense. And you might still have to do a little bit of work to make it uh, a, a little more streamlined, but um, this this is great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save this crocodile zip. It, they, they come in as zip files. Um, and then you, all you need to do is extract that zip, uh, which you probably won't see on the stream right now, but I'm just going to extract it to a folder. Yeah, and just because um, hubs only supports GLTFs or GLBs doesn't mean your source uh, asset has to be a GLTF or GLB. Um, but, you know, like Jim said, the Blender importer half of the GLTF ex Blender GLTF exporter um, is, is going to just kind of set things up uh, easier if you're starting with a GLB, but you can start with an, you know, an FBX or any other file format that Blender can import. Exactly. Well, I'm going to pop over to Blender now and um, bring that model in. Now, you can't just open it. You have to do an import. So I'm going to get rid of the, the old cube. Bye, cube. And go in and choose import GLTF 2.0 there. You'll see it says GLB also next to it. Um, can you see this screen? I don't know if you can see yep. this screen. Cool. Excellent. And now I'm going to go to my downloads and I'm going to find that crocodile folder. And usually it's called scene.gltf, like the way uh, Sketchfab auto names it. Because uh, Sketchfab actually auto generates those GLTF files for you, which is pretty sweet. Um, so if I bring this in, there he is. Um, don't, don't worry if you don't see textures because you're not in texture mode yet. Um, I'm going to switch over to the viewport shading mode where I can see it. And there he is. There now, when these come in, they often have a bunch of extra stuff that you don't really need. Um, I'll show you. In the case of this, there's these, like, a bunch of empty nodes that are, like, these little helper things. Like, for some reason, this guy's pivot point is under his one foot instead of in the middle. These are things I like to fix first. Yeah, I imagine, like, a lot of this could be artifacts of just Blender's automatic conversion. I mean... They basically have this pipeline set up where any asset you upload to Sketchfab um, can, you know, they'll automatically generate a GLTF for, which is really awesome. And that that's the reason we can even do um, Sketchfab importing in hubs, because uh, you know uh, Sketchfab does this this whole process on the back end. But it's you know it's it's automated. It's it's not perfect. Yeah, um, and so the thing you're gonna get out the other end. It's of the really end. hard, and we know from hubs experience, it's really hard to make a one size fits all. Yeah. Uh, you know, tooling for for like models that any user could have made so um, if i look over in the hierarchy here it starts off with this root node and then there's another root node and then a long string of garbage i don't know what that is and then another root <laughs> node so basically i'm looking for the one that's just wow like, where's so the actual there's model. the actual <laughs> model it looks like a little inverted uh orangish triangle and then the mesh underneath that. So all I really care about is that one. All this extra garbage above it, um, I can just uh, get rid of. Now, the, the way that I do it, though, because if I start deleting these nodes, these actually often have transform information right. on them about where they're located in space. And if right, I so start deleting start them, moving. this model might resize or flip or turn or whatever. Mm -hmm. So what I do in Blender is find the model node that I'm looking for and select it over here. And then what I do is go to object. Uh, I'll, I'll show you in the menu first, and then I'll show you the shortcut. I go to object, uh, parent, and then there's this thing called keep, uh, sorry, clear and keep transformation. So it'll clear all the parenting information off of this uh, thing, but it'll keep it visually where it is. And that's awesome. And the, the that's shortcut That's a super for useful that, tool. Yeah, the shortcut is Alt-P, um, and then you'll get a little pop-up menu where you can choose that. So keep... Uh, clear and keep transformation. Boom. There. You'll see over in the hierarchy, it popped out of all this nonsense. Okay. Um, and now you're safe to just delete all that. Um, you can either like select everything or right click and say select hierarchy and then. Uh, oh, that's right. a very, that's a very useful uh, <laughs> little thing to know that exists there. Yeah. I, didn't I use that, that all the time. So, yeah. so that's cool. Now the one other problem I have is that it's pivot point is under its uh, right foot here instead of mm -hmm. centered in the viewport. So what I do uh, is make sure that your 3D cursor is 
at the origin, and the quick way to do that is to hit Shift S. You get the little pop-up menu, and then you can hit the number one, or this one called Cursor to World Origin. So it's like Shift S1, we'll get it there. So if your cursor ended up accidentally, maybe you're a new Blender user and you're not used to like right-clicking, if you're <laughs> that, like me. I'm, I'm a right-click select guy, sorry, left clickers. Uh, I learned it that way. So anyway, Shift S1, and then it'll go to the middle. And then I go up to the object menu, and I choose Set Origin. Make sure that the crocodile selected Object, Set Origin, and then I can choose Origin to 3D Cursor. And uh, that'll put now the little origin of this model is has been moved 